very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So Pacific Gas and Electric is a utility in Northern California that services more than 10 million customers across 70,000 square miles of territory. Why would a 100-year-old company, highly regulated, fairly successful, even think about moving to the cloud? One of the big reasons is our customers now have choices. Customers can choose to band together and create a coalition and purchase power as a wholesaler. Additionally, our customers can choose to go and be completely independent using solar. These reasons and others are why PG&E is very focused on affordability. Not just the incremental affordability things that we've done in the past, but we're also now looking for structural changes in our affordability. Another reason is our industry, the utility industry as a whole, is going through disruption. The utility industry in California is, going, is in the midst of major disruption. And part of this disruption is driven by very environmentally sound policy being made by the government in the state of California. An example is, by the year 2030, more than 50% of the power produced needs to come from renewable resources. Things like electric vehicles, which are essentially moving power plants. The rooftop solar is growing at astronomical rates. And the price of battery power is dropping to the point where it's easy for you as an individual consumer to put a nice battery system in your home. This is driving PG&E to look at the grid in different ways. How do we manage it? How do we make sure that we can bring these resources in in a safe and reliable way? As with any disruption comes opportunity. There's business opportunity. There's business model opportunity. There's new products that we could deliver. The disruption and the opportunity are really pushing PG&E to embrace innovation. Now, these two concepts, innovation and affordability, in the past have been two things you cannot pick up as a company simultaneously. And so what we did, my team went and looked at other industries that have gone through similar disruption. We looked at companies that disrupted different industries, and just as importantly, we looked at companies that were disrupted but then found a way to thrive. We looked for common traits amongst these companies. And one of the big common traits we found was the way they used the cloud. And so we chose at that point to make an investment in building things natively to the cloud. What is it like? Why is it so different? Why are these companies able to disrupt? And I had, through that, series, that, that work, I had a series of epiphanies, realizations, and an aha moments. And one of the big ones that I had was that the cloud operates natively and naturally with exponentials, or the doubling at every step. And one of the things that I know is human beings do not think naturally in exponentials. Just a simple illustration. If I were to walk from here about 75 feet over there, I'd have taken about 30 steps. Now, if I did that in exponential terms, one, two, four, and so on, by the time I hit the 24th step, I'd have gone halfway around the Earth. And here's the real kicker. By the time I hit the 30th step, I'd have gone around the Earth more than 20 times. And so one of the big moments that I had here when I realized this is that I could map all of my experience that I have building applications, building data centers, and running operations. I could map it into the cloud and do the same thing in the cloud. But if I did just that, I would not take advantage of the power of the cloud and the exponentials. This work led to 
a cloud strategy starting in 2018, we're gonna be cloud first. So anything new we build, we'll go to the cloud first. The second theme we found in these companies that disrupted and those that were disrupted and found a way to thrive is the embracing, that, the understanding that culture is a key differentiator and an indicator of success. One of my favorite quotes, and as soon as I heard it, I put it on, this, on my whiteboard in my office, come she Jassy, who you'll see later, he said, there is no compression algorithm for experience. And why I like this quote so much is it mirrors the experience that I went through with my team. If I hadn't gone through and built things natively in the cloud, I would not recognize how different it is. I also used this as a launch point to create a very simple cloud mentorship program. And this is a very easy program to get started. If you, as an individual at PG&E, express interest in the cloud, we will assign a mentor to you, an AWS certified mentor. We will make sure you have a set of curated learning resources, and then we will give you access unfettered to AWS. Along my path, I found a, a statistic that said, if 10% of the workforce makes the change and operates in the new way, that is a tipping point for the culture. And so I have a personal goal to get 10% of the workforce at PG&E certified in AWS. And without a lot of fanfare, without a lot of advertisement, we've made great strides to this goal. We have over 15% of the workforce in motion, 26 people are either in process of going through the certification process or have gone through it. And what I love about this is it's not just IT folks coming to me and asking to be part of this. We have people from our lines of business expressing great interest in this. Of those 26 people, 13 of us have actually gone and gotten AWS certified. And what I love about this part is when, when somebody finishes the certification process, this has happened independently multiple times with me, they've come up and said, John, you'd get up on stage, you'd lead our meetings, and we'd understand about every fourth or fifth word when you started talking about the cloud. We really didn't get it. We went through and we got certified, and now we really get it. And that is huge. Of our 13 certifications, we have five that are professional level, which I think is pretty good for any enterprise. But we didn't want to stop there. Three of us went even further and got all five core AWS certifications. Now, when I launched this program, I decided that I wanted to do that as well. I wanted to go the whole distance. One, because I really wanted to understand this and I wanted to, to learn. But more importantly, I wanted to underscore for the other executives and other people at PG&E that, hey, a director went and did this. And he did it because this is the new way of IT. When we think about the affordability and innovation challenge, what happens and what we've realized is the cloud enables the impossible. It allows us to look at both and do things with both of them at the same time. When it comes to affordability, I like to say that AWS is at least 300 times more experienced at building data centers than we are. This is simple math, right? Last year at reInvent, I believe I heard that AWS is building the equivalent of a mid-sized data center every day of the year. Well, if they've been doing that a couple of years, enterprises, they only build a handful of data centers, so it's easy math. What's wonderful, though, is AWS takes what they do and the working with exponentials, and they pass on to us new and very amazing services, and they also pass on to us the lowering of costs. We're working with our partner network, probably several of you in the, in the room today, to help define our architecture and design of our cloud environment. We wanna make sure that we, out of the gate, do it right, and we get the automation in place. We're also doing an assessment of our application portfolio as we speak. It'll be done sometime next year. And then once we've completed that, we will look to our partners to help us with the migration. On the flip side, when it comes to innovation, I am thrilled to have been part of and helped launch a new digital innovation zone for PG&E. 
We're starting with AWS, and it's very similar to getting access to the learning resources. You bring your idea, your prototype idea, you bring it in, and we spin something up, and we work with you to make it happen. We're working with our partners to establish a methodology for this prototyping. And as soon as we get good at that pr prototyping, we will look to our partners to help us scale. We are serious about using the different services that are available with AWS. And on the screen, you see a number of them that we're either existing with or deploying. And I'm sure by the end of the week, there'll be at least a handful more of icons on that screen. As I look ahead, one of the things that I'm very excited about is we've just launched a robust analytics platform for our data scientists. It's part of the digital innovation zone. Data scientists can come in and work on models and methodology and, and produce some really good results. We're starting a pilot for migrating our applications early next year. And the thing that I'm, I'm just thrilled about, the thing that really keeps me going when I look into the future is something that'll allow us to lower our cost and be more innovative and that is getting out of the data center business altogether. Thank you very much.